Hey everybody, my name is Charlotte and I am one of your YouTube hosts. We are so glad you're joining us today. A little later on in the service, you're gonna hear my friend Melanie talk about some serve opportunities. But as online, you're probably thinking, how can I be involved in this? Well, there's actually two great opportunities for you to be, be involved. One is Operation Christmas Child. You can build a shoebox right online. The other is you can sign up to bell ring wherever you're at. Or if you're not comfortable still with bell ringing out in public, you can actually sign up to do a virtual bell ringer and have people donate to the cause. We are so excited you're here with us today. Please jump in the chat whichever platform you're viewing on and let us know where you're joining us in from. Talk to you soon. Well, welcome Bridgepoint, how we doing? Everybody doing all right? If you're joining us online, we're glad you're here. Let's stand. Let's sing together today. Let's have some fun. Here we go. All right, let's sing with all we got. Let's sing, let praise. Let praise be the weapon that silences the enemy. Praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Yes. 
Is the God 
good morning. You know, as we get ready to sing this next song, uh, the chorus says, it's every breath in our lungs that we give praise, that we use to give praise to Jesus. We were created with every breath in our being to give him praise. That's our purpose. And so this morning, would you just lean in with me and let's draw closer to him as we sing this together. Yes, you are 
I don't know uh, what you walked in carrying today, and I don't know the weight of your journey. I don't know many of your stories, but I want you to know the reason we sing, the reason we pour out our praise is because Jesus, because of the work that he did for us on the cross, because the tomb where they laid his dead body is empty because he rose, means that your life and your story has, it matters, that it has purpose, and it has the potential for God to use it to turn that mess into a message. The past couple weeks at Bridgepoint, we've seen uh, approximately 13 baptisms across our three campuses because God is at work. The past couple weeks at Bridgepoint, just last week, for example, and somebody reminded me of it this morning, the power of this series, Bless This Message, with Scotty sharing his story and a reminder for all of us that God is not done with you. He sees you, and he sees that story, and he sees the plans that he has for you. So church, we respond. We pour out our praise. We celebrate that he turns graves into gardens and bones into armies and seas into highways because that's who Jesus is, and that's what he wants to do for you. So thank you for responding with us. You can grab a seat. We're entering into a time of uh, what we call offering, and and really we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a church that responds, uh, because the reality is to do ministry, it does require some financial investment. So thank you, church, that you invest. Even everybody online, I hope that you're thankful and excited for how God's working and moving in this place. Uh, Lots of lots of things to respond to God about, uh, but one thing that I just I I hope it's as humbling to you as it is to me. uh, But just a few weeks ago, we've made public that it seems like God is opening a path for us to to have and secure a permanent campus in Seminole. What a blessing from God. And so in just the couple weeks we've been talking about it, uh, you can actually pull it up if you, you, we have a dashboard online to keep everybody up to date in the tracking of it. Uh, But we have already received, either through pledges or gifts, over $350,000 towards that campus. Wilder still is that someone at at the church has offered a million dollar, dollar for dollar match. So basically we're at $700,000 towards securing that campus. God is at work. And here's what, just what I want to remind you of. As you, as you give and as you invest here, and hopefully as you give above and beyond for and towards that campus, I hope that you see people. I hope that you see an opportunity to respond, to say, man, Seminole, we're, we're there. One church in multiple locations, we're putting a stake in the ground there because we need people to know that Jesus is at work. We need people to know that Jesus sees them, that God has plans for their lives, and that's what this is about. So on Giving Tuesday, it's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, uh, that's going to be a day for us, for our church, where we're going to be for Seminole. It's our hope that on that day, as we head towards that day, that you're praying now what it looks like for you to stretch in faith and respond to what God's doing. If that's a stretch of $20, then stretch for $20. If it's a stretch of $100 or $500 or $1,000, then you stretch in responding to God. It's going to take all of us getting behind what God's doing in faith. But it's not just finances that we ask for our people and regular attenders. Actually, next week, we start a series called Be Christmas. But Be Christmas is just catching up to all the ways folks can get involved and, and get in, uh, get excited to serve our community beyond finances. Right, Melanie? Tell us about some yeah, of those. So Tyler mentioned, obviously, thinking about and praying about how you and your families can get involved in the Giving Tuesday and um, just getting involved in getting our Seminole campus and securing that, um, but also be praying and thinking about ways that you guys can get involved in our Be Christmas uh, Serve opportunities. We've got lots of different opportunities that are now on the website and on the app, so make sure to look at those. We're gonna be partnering with organizations like Reach St. Pete. They serve um, low-income families and individuals and those that are experiencing homelessness. And St. Pete Free Clinic, again, 
catering a lot to a lot of those families that are in need during this time. Um, Salvation Army, bell ringing, there's something for everybody. So we want you guys to be thinking about that, be praying about that, be asking your family and friends and your groups, journey groups, life groups, all of those on how you guys can get involved. Because in a year like 2020, um, there is definitely much needed hope and much needed love to be giving to our community. And we have a lot of that to give. Um, as a church, as individuals, we are just asking you guys to be a part of it. Um, we're super excited for what this month will bring and um, would love to see our church really show up for our community and our world. Yeah, we're going to be Christmas. And if you're feeling real frisky, there is an opportunity for you to serve every day. It's a project that's available to you, to your family, to your friends, your coworkers, your groups, whatever, uh, to jump in and to get involved. So check those out. The best way to do that is go through the app. Even in offering, we're not passing buckets in this season. Everything you need to know is through the app. Pull up the Bridgepoint app. Go to the five to know. See these opportunities. But it's time to respond, church. It's time to respond to being Christmas. It's time to respond that as people that know what it's like to be in a mess. And as we're about to hear one more message in this series, uh, Pinellas County needs some hope and we know where to find it. His name's Jesus. We're going to continue celebrating him today. Melanie, will you pray for us? Yeah, pray with me. Uh, Dear God, we just thank you for today. Um, I thank you for every person that is in a chair right now, every person that's tuning in, every person that will see this message um, later on, Lord, and know that It carries weight. We carry a burden as believers to be light and to be hope and to be love to those around us. So God, as you are coming into our lives, um, blessing all of our messes, Lord, we just give it all to you. We want to know who you are. We want to recognize your presence and we want to share that with those around us. So come into this place today. Um, God, we love you and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, Bridge Point. What's going on? Good to see you. I want to welcome those attending in person, uh, Tyrone campus, those attending in person, downtown campus, those watching online. Thank you for tuning in. Also, those who are going to be checking out the YouTube channel later, uh, our, our podcast, it all counts. No matter your method of how you do church, it all counts as being part of the family. Also want to welcome specifically those who are coming for the first time, maybe right now in person, or those tuning in for the first time. That's a big deal. Uh, when you're trying to decide uh, what church to go to or maybe even trying out church for, a first, for the first time, there's a lot of feelings, a lot of maybe nerves involved in that. Thank you for taking a chance with us. That means everything to us. We really do value you. Uh, as you heard, there's a lot of exciting things going, here, uh, going on here at Bridgepoint. There's a lot of ways that God is blessing us. Doesn't mean that we don't have difficulty or challenges like everybody else, but it also doesn't mean that God isn't being good to us. Uh, you heard about the exciting uh, news of, of the Seminole campus. Uh, my little girl, Iris, and, and I, she's not even two years old, on Friday we stopped by the Seminole campus. I put her up on my shoulders. We took a spontaneous tour of the building. We held up, we debriefed everything that we saw, and two thumbs up from us. Looks great to us, all right? Uh, Christmas, the Be Christmas initiative. I'm incredibly proud of Bridgepoint, of how intentional we're, we're being, of, of being joy, of being Christmas to our community. Uh, of, this is one of the things that I've, I've been learning recently, is the best way uh, to experience joy is to not try to kind of conjure it up yourself and to keep it to yourself, but it's actually to show love and compassion towards someone else, right? To go beyond ourselves. And so we have the opportunity to, to check out um, with our family, with our friends, ways that we could be ev- involved in serving of being Christmas, of being joy to our community. Gosh, I love our community. And this is our chance to serve, okay? So make sure you jump in on that. We are not just continuing, we're actually concluding our series today uh, called Bless This Mess. And just to catch you up a little bit or refresh or whatever you need here, week one, uh, Tyler got us started with these truths that God won't waste a weight, God won't waste a hurt, God won't waste a loss, God won't waste a mess. Actually, I heard someone uh, inviting a friend to church recently, and, and she was explaining this series. She said, you know, come, come to our church. We're doing this series called uh, Bless This Mess, and really the series is all about, well, me. Like, I'm a mess. Bless this. 
Well put. I don't know that there's much to add to that, right? I don't know if there's anything else I could say. Week two, Tyler really highlighted this again. God won't waste a mess. Notice the purpose in that. Uh, then last week, Scotty Rogers, a heartfelt message uh, with a big idea here. God will transform your mess into a message. Uh, is Scotty Rogers, a beloved uh, friend of mine and fellow pastor of mine, moves on to his next of which God is calling him to. If you haven't had a chance to hear this message, please check it out. Uh, Scotty really wore his heart on his sleeve and in a way I think that helped a lot of people. I love that guy and his family dearly. Make sure that you check out that that message, but today, today we're asking the question, I mean the title is, is Bless This Mess, right? Well let's ask the obvious question. How can we be blessed in the mess? How can we be blessed in the mess? Specifically, how do we experience joy in the mess? How do we experience joy in the mess? I don't know what your mess is, but I know that life is messy. I don't know if your mess is that right now you're navigating through a divorce. I don't know if your mess is that someone, maybe yourself, was on an operating table this last week. I don't know if your mess is a relationship that, that is bringing a ton of complexities and complications to your everyday life right now. I, I don't know if your mess is trying to navigate school in a COVID world. I don't know what your mess is. Maybe you lost someone that you loved. Shockingly, I don't know what your mess is, but I know that life is messy. And I know what we all want. We all want joy. We do. We might think it's happiness sometimes, right? For things just to kind of bounce our way, but, but we know that oftentimes life doesn't afford that privilege. And so we're looking really for joy. We're looking for that calmness, that confidence, the, the ability to enjoy life no matter the circumstances. Uh, uh, Saint uh, Augustine said this quote. He said, we all, without exception, all try their hardest to reach the same goal, that is joy. Without exception, all try their hardest to reach the same goal, that is joy. So. How can we be blessed in the mess? How do we experience joy in the mess? As I began this journey, diving in in this pursuit of joy, uh, among my research, one of the books that I picked up uh, was a book called A Thousand Gifts by Anne Voskamp. A Thousand Gifts by Ann Voskamp. And it might be one of those reads, one of those learns that proves to be really catalytic and maybe even a turning point for my personal growth. Uh, Ann introduces or really highlights a word uh, called uh, Eucharist, Teo, Eucharist Teo. See, we can experience joy in the mess by living out Eucharist Teo. Now you might be like, you lost me here, Chad. All right. A Eucharist tale, I'll explain uh, what that is, but it means thanksgiving, it means thanksgiving, and here's the deal, if we all can say hakuna matata, we can say Euch Eucharist tale, I promise, go ahead, give it a try, Eucharist tale, can you say it? Say it out loud, Eucharist tale, all right, hakuna matata, Eucharist tale, all right, listen, it comes from this, primarily this passage where Jesus is at the Last Supper and it says he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them. Now let me give you context here real quick. Remember, the Last Supper, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So when we're asking the question, how can we be blessed in the mess? Uh, Jesus was in a pretty messy situation himself, right? Incredible stress, incredible anguish that he was about to experience. Betrayal, torture, murder, all of the things, messy, messy doesn't seem to do it justice, right, of what he was in. And yet he exemplifies in this pivotal moment that he gives thanks. Eucharist tale, he gives thanks. So uh, he, here's the cool part uh, about Eucharist tale and the breakdown of it, okay? Again, Eucharist tale, not Hakuna Matata, but you can do this. Eucharist tale means thanksgiving. If you have any kind of religious affiliation at all, you've probably heard the word Eucharist in your life, right? Okay, it, well, it means thanksgiving. And in this word, if you look at the word, the Greek word here, charis, actually means grace. So in this Eucharist tale, thanksgiving, it actually embodies grace. It comes from grace. 
Grace leads to thanksgiving. And actually, if you're really not about to stand up and cheer right now for this linguistic lesson, the derivative here, pardon me, is joy. So it's, it's grace leads to thanksgiving leads to joy. Let me kind of draw this up for you. Let's move beyond the Greek, okay? Grace leads to thanksgiving, leads to joy. That is how we can be blessed in our mess. This is how we can experience joy, by identifying God's grace, receiving it with thanksgiving, and expressing it with joy. Eucharist tale, grace, thanksgiving, joy. So how can we experience joy? How can we be blessed in our mess? Well, first it starts by identifying God's grace in our life. It starts by identifying God's grace in our life. The word grace means gift. And the truth is that God fills our days. He fills our lives with gifts, with blessings. He does. He does. It it might be hard to see sometimes because as we absorb pain, But the truth is that God's grace, his gifts, his goodness exist in our daily lives. John 10.10 says this, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. That is to experience the fullness of joy in our lives. Joy that comes from identifying and receiving God's gifts. But here's something to remember. Our faith journey isn't just us and God. Maybe you feel sometimes your faith journey is like kind (laughs) of God's walking or running away from you and you're chasing him and that's what your life is, right? You just trying to catch him, get close to him. But, But that's actually not what the journey is. You have to remember there's someone actually out to destroy you, to steal your joy, to kill your peace, the enemy, the evil one, who opposes both God and you and me. It's not just us and God. There's actually a war uh, waged. But Jesus comes so that we could have life and have it to the full, a full life of inexpressible joy. Listen, this is what I want my life to be like. I want a life filled with joy. I don't want to be known anymore as the guy that's always stressed out. I don't want to be the person who's always so focused on solving problems in the present that I can't cherish the the gifts right in front of me. I don't want to be the, the person so focused on the destination that I can't enjoy the journey along the way. I remember when I was moving from uh, New York here to Florida and the staff in New York there, uh, the church we were were moving on from was so good to us, gave us so many gifts and and departing goodbyes. And and there was a note written to me in in some of those gifts, in one of those gifts, there was a colleague of mine and he said, Chad, hey, God's greatest blessings to you as you move forward. Try to enjoy the ride a little bit. He knew me well. And I don't think he was just talking about like the chaotic minivan ride from New York to Florida. That was a trip. But about my career, about my ambitions, about my goals. I am an ambitious guy. I I do want to achieve things. I do want to maximize my life for God. But in doing so a lot of times, I allow it to control me and I lose sight of the blessings in front of me. I wanna change that. I wanna experience Eucharist Teo. Grace, thanksgiving, joy. Life, life to the full. I wanna stop being robbed of joy and peace in the present moments of my life. In the beginning, if you think about it, Adam and Eve and that whole thing, You can make the case that the original sin was actually one of ingratitude. Think about it. Adam and Eve had everything. Full presence, full blessings from God, right? And yet they were told one thing. 
Just one thing. Hey, you could have everything. You have everything. Just stay away from one thing, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve saw what they had and there was a gap, and albeit like a very small one, between all the things they had and, and then what they didn't have. But yet the thief came in and he backfilled that gap between what Adam and Eve were, were given and what they weren't. He filled that gap with lies, causing them to question God's motives, God's character. And he does the same thing to us today. There's a gap between what we have and what we don't have. And the thief comes in and backfills it with lies, causing us to question God's character and his motives. Causing us to believe that maybe God has this extra bag of blessings and he's keeping it from us. And we too have the sin of ingratitude. Here's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Here's the question that serves as a bedrock of to what, whether or not we experience joy. Is what God has given me enough for me? Oh. Is what God has given me enough for me? There's a gap between what we've been given and what we haven't. And if we filled that gap by listening to the enemy, by listening to the thief who's robbed us of joy and peace and instead filled us with bitterness or anger because we have began to doubt God's character or question his motives. It's one thing to know the right answer to this question. Well, of course it's good enough. It's another thing to believe it. Maybe you're in a hard spot today and so when you see this question is what God has given me enough for me, maybe you're asking some questions of like, well, how about what God has taken from me? How about what, a, what I've lost? And in love and encouragement to you today, I want you to know that it takes faith to see God's grace. It takes faith to believe that even in the hardship, even in the pain, God is good and you are loved. The thief wants to take your joy. He wants to take your peace. He wants you to believe God is holding back from you. He is taking things from you. He's robbing you. It takes faith to believe in God's grace that you are still loved and God is still good. It takes faith to believe but if you want to experience joy, it starts by identifying God's grace, his goodness, his gifts. Name it, identify it, start seeing it. The more we look for God's grace in our daily lives, the more of God's grace we see. Everything's fair game, by the way, everything. You could thank God for the people around you. You could thank God for the house you have, the place you live, the community you live in. You could thank God for fresh air. You can thank God for the smell of clean babies. Does that sound weird? I have three little kids in my house, and when a baby smells clean, it's really refreshing. Because, like, I know the other smells. You could thank God for the beach. You could thank God for food. You could thank God that you can see color or you can walk, move, have your being. The more that you recognize God's grace and blessings in your life, the more of them you see. And that is where the process of experiencing joy begins. And it exists even in the pain. Identify it, name it. God's grace, his gifts, his goodness in your life. So that's how we identify God's grace and his gifts. Let's receive it. We have to receive God's grace with thanksgiving. Receive God's grace with thanksgiving. There's a verse here that a lot of us are probably familiar with. Again, even if uh, you're, you're familiar with the church or not. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Really important verse. It highlights that thanksgiving can be given at all times. There's always God's grace, even in the hard, hardships, right? But it's also one of those verses that if you read, it, it kind of sounds like this. Be thankful always, all the time. I'm like, that's inspiring, right? 
It's kind of like in a few days Thanksgiving. It's like, this will be family time and we will have fun. This will be a special holiday. You're like, yeah, as long as I don't talk to Uncle Louie over there or whoever the relative is, as long as we keep our space. Social distancing, everyone, right? That just meant relationally. Okay, here we go. Check out this verse. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Look at this. Grace, all this is for your benefit. All right, Paul, I'm listening. Thank you. (laughs) You know how to get my attention. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow. So grace leads to what? Thanksgiving. The more we recognize God's grace, his gifts, his goodness in our lives, it causes our thanksgiving to overflow. Now, I mentioned that book by uh, Anne Voskamp of A Thousand Gifts. So in, what the book is centered on is Anne actually sets out to write a thousand ways in which she sees God's grace in her day-to-day life and then documents the personal transformation, heart change that, that happens from that. You be- better believe that brings transformation when you are looking for God's grace every day. Uh, early in my time here at, at Bridgepoint, one of my mentors, uh, Mike Kalap, uh, a very beloved staffer here on, on our Bridgepoint team, he introduced me to the idea of the blessing book. Now, early in quarantine, I gave a message and I highlighted this. I don't know if everyone here was watching that message because we were in quarantine and had nothing to do. Or I don't know if nobody was watching that message because we were in quarantine and had no idea what to do, okay? So either way, I'm bringing it back up to you here today. Uh, the blessing book is exactly what it sounds like. It is a book in which you write and record blessings uh, each, each day. But it's one of the ways that we can record and document God's grace and to receive it with thanksgiving, to celebrate God's grace, his grace, goodness, his gifts in our life. But here's the pushback to that. You might be thinking, and maybe you feel like it's a sinful thought, Chad, that's great. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to sit back and reflect on, God, on, on what I'm thankful for and all the ways that God has blessed me in my life. My life is not a Thanksgiving episode of Charlie Brown. I totally understand, to be honest with you, when I heard I was asked to give a message on gratitude, here's my sinful thought. I don't have time to study gratitude. I have problems to solve. Uh, There is a community that's hurting right now. There are people who feel like their hearts have been ripped from them. I don't have time to sit back and reflect on what I'm thankful for. There are things to do. There's people to help. You've heard the phrase, time is money. Time's not money, time is life. Time is life. The question is, how do we want to experience our life? Do we want to experience our life with joy? Joy is found at the table of thanksgiving. It is. And I guess if you and I together are asking ourselves, do I have time for that? Well, do we have time to feel miserable? Do we have time for our spirit to feel like it's dying? Do we have time to be crushed by stress? Time isn't money. Time isn't just valuable. Time is life. How do we want to experience it? And if we want to experience joy in our lives, It starts at the table of thanksgiving by identifying God's grace, his goodness to us, receiving it with thanksgiving. And by doing that, we can experience joy. Joy. I'm up for trying that option in my life. I'm up for spending my moments in thanksgiving so that I can have a life, a life to the full, fullness of joy. So how can we experience joy? How can we be blessed in our mess? Well, we identify God's grace, right? We name it, we name God's grace in our lives. Everything's fair game, all the things, anything. And then we receive it with thanksgiving. Finally, 
we express it with joy. We express God's grace with joy. Check this out. Paul here says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. May he fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyone want that? Anyone want that? I'm 34 years old, pretty sure. I think 35 is coming soon. I've never seen a holiday season more anticipated. I, I, really, I, I really haven't, you know, in my, in my life. Um, like there's so many of us who have like Christmas convictions, okay, Christmas music convictions. And a lot of us are willing to kick that stuff to the curb, right? Because we're like, you know what? Um, yeah, let's go ahead, let's speed it up this year. <laughs> like let's get to Christmas faster. We all agree, what? we want, we just want some joy in our lives. Right, we're ready for that, okay? This is obviously so much bigger than a holiday season. God wants to fill us with all joy, all peace so that by we can trust in him and that's the key and also the kicker a lot of times it comes by trusting him that's where joy is found we identify God's grace we receive it with thanksgiving and we express it with joy and joy comes from trusting in him trusting in him you see one of the main barriers in experiencing joy that I could testify to firsthand is pride Pride is often the primary barrier in experiencing joy. It is. And so here's a few things that I've, I've learned recently that can be, for the lack of better terms, joy boosters to us, all right? I didn't know what else to call it, people, okay? I'm on this journey with you, all right? One, get low. Now, some of you are like, what? That has all kinds of context. Yes, here's what the context is. Humility. Humility, get low with humility. Uh, Jesus talked about having faith like a child, right? Faith like a child. We know how children are, right? We know how innocent they are. We know how trusting they are to the point that it's like dangerous how trusting they are, right? We know that laughter that comes from the belly, that joy that brings joy to our heart because it's so pure. God asked that same thing of us. He says the greatest among you will be the person who becomes like a child. Faith like a child. Get low. So if you're asking yourself, can I experience joy? I wanna identify God's grace in my life. I wanna name it. I wanna receive that. I wanna celebrate that. I wanna cherish that. What's right in front of me with thanksgiving. I wanna experience joy. Well, are you operating with humility or is your pride blocking you from experiencing joy? Faith like a child. Are you willing to trust him? Here's a second joy booster. Look back. Get low in humility. Look back. Recently, I, I, took, I took, I didn't have the chance. I made the chance, took the opportunity to take this blessing book and to read through the blessings I had written up to this point. I actually started this journey in quarantine, which... Um, as for many, if not all of us, I had a big impact on mental health, right? It was a huge struggle. It was an intensive time. And this blessing book really helped me be able to experience joy even in that intensive season. And for the first time, I picked it up and, and I, I read it. I, I sat outside and uh, I read the blessings out loud and and actually brought laughter, surprises. I forgot about many things. My neighbors probably thought I was nuts. And I was reliving the memories, reliving the blessings. And it reminded me of how faithful Jesus has been to me. And, and the bridge that he's been to me so many times, that bridge will still hold in the present and in the future. In the Old Testament, the Israelites had tons of like rituals and, and symbols and, and reminders of how God had saved them and been faithful to them in the past. For us to experience joy, we gotta look back. God was there for you before. He's here for you now. And he will take care of you moving forward. You could find joy in that. So all that stress, which may not go away, right? Life is stressful. We could still experience joy 
because we know that the bridge that held us before will carry us again. We can look back and find joy in that. So we gotta get low in humility. We gotta look back in memory. I read recently, someone said, count your blessings and discover who can be counted on. Count your blessings and discover who can be counted on. See, as you record blessings, as you think back on blessings, how God's been good to you, one of the things you'll also notice of, of the valuable role that people have played in your life, the people that God's placed in your life to bless you, you will. You'll thank God for them. Count your blessings and discover who can be counted on. God has been faithful to you and to me. And we can continue to find joy in knowing that that bridge we walked across before will carry us again. Thank God for that, right? Get low in humility. Look back, look back. And finally, let go. This was absolute open heart surgery for me because we have to let go of our expectations. Pride and joy can't coexist. They can't. Pride and joy can't coexist. And, and one of the, some of the things that are wrapped up in that pride is our own ambitions, our own goals, our own expectations. And the reason why some of us aren't experienced joy in the present, we're not able to identify God's grace right in front of us and receive it with thanksgiving and experience joy is because we have expectations that we have made. We have goals that we have drawn up. We have ambitions that we want fulfilled and we're holding tightly to those. And I am guilt, more guilty than anyone in this room probably or watching online. But if we let go of those goals that we've made, those ambitions that we have, it's, if we go back to thy will be done rather than my will be done, we open up our hands so that we could receive the gifts, the grace, the goodness of God in the present. And we can find joy in our daily moments. But we can't receive those things if we're holding tightly to our things. That was a heart wrecker for me. I have ambition. I have goals. I have expectations. I want to be viewed as significant. I want to accomplish things in my life. I want to be able to say when my life is over, this is what I've done, but I forget what it means to trust Jesus, to follow Jesus, not Chad, Jesus. So if nothing else, thanks for coming to my therapy session today, but I know I'm not the only one. We gotta let go of our expectations and follow Jesus again. And then we find our joy in the fact that we just get to do life with him. And every good thing that comes our way, we can identify and we can receive with thanksgiving and we can enjoy the journey. Because we've let go of our expectations. So how can we be blessed in our mess? We can be blessed in the mess by naming God's grace, receiving it with thanksgiving, and expressing with joy. That is how we can be blessed in our mess. Eucharist tale, grace, thanksgiving, joy. So here's the question, obvious question. What's your next step What's your next step in that process of identifying God's grace, of receiving it with thanksgiving and expressing it with joy? Uh, maybe you are fired up and you're like, I wanna write a list of a thousand. I promise you that'll transform your heart and mind. It will. Uh, and maybe you want to start the practice of a, a blessing book. And, and you wanna try to be intentional in, in writing and recording those, those blessings each day. M maybe for you, you need to take a moment right now and you wanna just get to it right now and start documenting, reminding yourself the, the way that you've seen God's grace and goodness and gifts in your life and to celebrate those. 
Maybe you're at a hard place and to identify God's grace feels like moving a mountain for you because you are in deep pain. I want you to know that God is still good and you are still loved and he will be patient in your pain. But don't be fooled. God's grace is still in your life. He's still good to you. There are still gifts in front of you and you can find joy in him. Eucharist Teo. Grace, thanksgiving, joy. Let's pray. God, thank you that you can provide us joy. Thank you for your grace. As Paul said, what do we have that has not been given? Jesus, I help, I I pray that you would help us identify your goodness that we would have the ability to receive it with thanksgiving, to to cherish those things. All of the things in our daily lives that you have gifted us with so that we could experience joy, not just life, but life to the full, overflowing with joy and peace. Jesus, for that person in pain today who feels like life has been taken from them, I ask, Jesus, that they would feel your grace again so that they could experience joy again. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. There's a song that we're going to sing here called Another in the Fire. And the lyrics say this, there's a There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Grace, grace, gift, blessing, God's goodness. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me, this artist begins to recount in scripture all the acts, just a, right, really just a few of the examples of God's faithfulness along the way. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding, look back, look back, of how I've been set free, there's a cross that bears the burden where another died for me, the greatest act of grace of all. There's another in the fire. We are not alone. And for that, Eucharist Teo, grace, thanksgiving, joy. Let's stand and worship together. Space between all the 
If you're in the room, out the door to the right, our prayer care um, is out that way. And we would love to just walk with you, pray with you guys, if you guys would uh, allow us to. If you're online, just click the button for prayer. Um, But other than that, we love you guys. Thank you for being here. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you back here next week. See you.